Welcome! In this video I will show you how to derive these two very useful expressions when dealing with spin sums in the solutions for the Dirac equation in quantum field theory. So I'm going to go derive each of them. I will of course begin with the first one and then with the other, even though honestly if you did the first one, doing the second is basically the same thing. So let's begin right, by deriving this expression right there. So what we have is that we are going to be summing over our uh, solutions, right, the US, the S signifying which spin we are dealing with, right, up or down, one or two, and U bar, keep in mind, U bar here of S, P, this is going to be US dagger times gamma zero. Okay, so that's what that bar meant. Okay, so now this we know what the u's are as well, right? So keep in mind, these u's, we found them in a previous video. If not, go back on the, in the playlist. And we have u s p. This thing is square root of p dot sigma, square root of p dot sigma bar. And then we have this little chi. In this case, it would be of s and s. So that's what these things are. So let's plug it in. So this would be now the sum, right? S equals one or two. And now let's plug in what we have. So U of S is going to be square root of P dot sigma, square root of P dot sigma bar. And we get our little chi's, chi S, chi S. And now we have U bar, which is again, U S dagger. So when we take the dagger, right? What's going to happen is that since these are matrices, they're going to switch places. So this is going to be gamma s dagger. And here we get p dot sigma. And then we are going to have comma, right? This is dagger. So it's now in this different position. Uh, chi s dagger square root of p dot sigma bar. OK, and don't forget, we still need to include the gamma 0. Now, gamma 0 in our vial or color representation is going to be 0 times the identity 2 by 2, right? Identity 2 by 2, 0. So that's what it looks like. So that is gamma 0. Good. Now we can go ahead and multiply by uh, gamma 0. right? So we can do the, the multiplication of, the, of these two parts right there. Let me just put this over here. And we go. So this would be this times this. So that would be zero. So we end up with chi s dagger p dot sigma bar. So basically what we accomplish here is that these two will switch places. So then we have chi s dagger, right? We multiply this times this. And now we have p dot sigma without a bar. Good. Now we multiply these two matrices together. So we still have this little spin something here. So now we have this times this. So we get P dot sigma chi s chi s dagger P dot sigma bar. Then we get this times that. So that would be basically both terms that are the same. So we get P dot sigma chi s chi s dagger P dot sigma. Then we got this times this. So that would be P dot sigma bar chi. Well, that doesn't look like a chi, sorry. Um, chi s chi s dagger. And then we have, so this is this times that. So we get p dot sigma bar. And finally, we get p dot sigma bar, chi s, chi s dagger, p dot sigma. OK, so we multiply that. Now, what we can do is put this little summation inside. So maybe let's, um, let me move a few things. So this is equal. Now I'm going to move this to the side. And I'm going to put the sum in, in here. So sum s equals 1, 2. 
sum s equals 1, 2. And we do the same thing over here. We move this a little bit. And this is going to be sum s equals 1, 2. Sum s equals 1, 2. Now, what is that thing? Let's calculate it. So we have sum s equals 1, 2 of chi s, chi s dagger. What is that? Well, this would be chi 1, chi 1 dagger plus chi 2, chi 2 dagger. Now, it doesn't matter which is which. Let's say chi 1 is 1, 0. So that would be 1, 0 times uh, 1, 0 plus 0, 1 times 0, 1. Well, what is that? This would be this times this. So here we get 1, this times that, 0, 0 times 1, 0, 0 times 0, 0. Plus, now similarly, 0 times 0, 0, 0, 0. So we get 0, 0, 0, 1. So in the end, this is simply 1, 0, 0, 1. Right? So this is the 2 by 2 identity. Good, so we can now plug that in. I'm not going to write all this again, so let me just quickly copy paste it. Okay, so since it's the identity, we can basically just get rid of it. Okay, so from here, we can now do a few more things. So first of all, p dot sigma, we know that what that is, right? We know that sigma is the identity, comma, our sigma i's while sigma bar is the identity comma minus our sigma i's. So for that reason, here we have square root, we can put everything inside, and we have e times the identity, 2 by 2, minus, this is here, right, minus p, our p dot sigmas, right, so p i's and sigma i's. And then we have e i2 plus p dot sigmas. But now these are just our uh, poly matrices, right? And then, well, we have this thing that is simply p dot sigma, right? Squared, but it gets rid of the square root. Down here we have p dot sigma bar. And down here we have very similar to what we have up, up there. In fact, it's exactly the same, just with the, the things in different order. So this is e2 plus p dot sigma e i2 minus p dot sigma. Good. I'm going to stick to blue, I guess, since I already made the change. Good. So now let's simplify uh, the terms in our diagonal. So this thing is uh, the, the sum times the difference. So that means we get e squared, right, minus our p squared sigma squared. But every single Pauli matrix squared gives you the identity, right? This also, by the way, has the identity. Identity squared, still the identity. So that is the identity as well, okay? And you can also take the identity out of the square root, right? No issue. The square root of a matrix is, is the square root of the elements in the diagonal. Square root of 1, still 1, so it's still the identity. Good. Then we have p dot sigma, p dot sigma bar, and down here we get exactly the same thing. i2 square root of e squared minus p squared. Good. Next, what is e squared minus p squared? That is m squared. And we can, I guess, hide the identity. We don't need to write it explicitly. Or we could, depends on, I guess, I guess we can leave it there for a while. This is m i2, right? It's m squared, but with a square root. p dot sigma, p dot sigma bar, and then we get, again, m i2. So here we can, I guess, separate this a little bit. Uh, I guess we can maybe get rid of it now. Uh, we can separate this, and we can write it as 0, 0, p dot sigma, p dot sigma bar, and then plus m 
times the identity, right? So just an implicit M. When you write just M, it is implicit that there's an identity there because otherwise you have to be writing down the identity in every single step and it just gets tedious. Okay, so there's a little bit more that we can do here. So the next thing to do is that now we want to say, well, there's a better way of writing this. So keep in mind, we have our beautiful gamma moves. What are the gamma moves? Well, gamma moves, this is simply gamma zero, comma, well, our gamma eyes. But what are our gamma eyes? Well, the gamma eyes, they are zero, sigma i, minus sigma i, zero. So we can now write gamma mu times p mu, p mu again, e comma our momentum. And what do we get? We get gamma zero times the energy minus because of the metric. And now we get gamma i times our p i's. Okay, what exactly is it that we have here? Well, then don't worry. So our gamma i's we can rewrite. So gamma zero is zero e e zero, right? Zero one one zero minus, and now gamma i's, as we saw, is zero sigma i. So we get sigma i dot uh, our momentums. So I guess we can go back to the notation we had before and just write it as sigma dot p. And maybe I should move it to the side. It is too close to the zero. So this is just sigma dot p. And down here, we get minus sigma dot p zero. And well, we can just put it all together now. And we get zero. And then we have e minus sigma dot p. Maybe let's move it like this. e minus sigma dot p, sorry, minus minus. So now we get a plus zero. What are those things? Well, this is exactly sigma, oh, sorry, p dot sigma, and this is exactly p dot sigma bar, zero. All right, so what that does basically is that it shows us that the expression that we just had, maybe let me just like start rewriting this. So our expression that we had found for our sum for the spins, so this was u s, u bar s, this we had found was, let me go back up. This was zero p dot sigma, p dot sigma bar. That doesn't look like a p. p dot sigma bar zero plus m. We now saw this is simply gamma mu p mu. So we can write this as gamma mu p mu plus m. And sometimes books are lazy and just write it as gamma times p which I think is a bit misleading, but I guess you can do it like that. Or you can use the slash notation and write it as p slash plus m. All those ways of writing it are equivalent. So you know, choose whatever you want, whatever makes you happy. Okay, so let's now get to work on this little expression right here, right? So the other one for the negative frequency solutions to the Dirac equation. So the procedure is going to be exactly the same. There's also there's only going to be a couple of minus signs in the way, but other than that, it's exactly the same. So let's plug in what this Vs is. So we saw Vs is simply square root p dot sigma. And well, let's not forget about our little sum. So this is sum s equals one, two, p dot sigma, eta s p dot sigma bar, eta s. Now, the daggered version of this. So that would be eta s dagger. And there's a minus sign, by the way. That's This is the, the difference uh, between the, the negative frequency solutions and the positive ones. That minus sign. That's it. So we have this, and then square root of p dot sigma, comma, minus eta s dagger square root of p dot sigma bar. Okay, and then we have gamma zero, right, which we know is zero identity, identity zero. This thing right there, the two by two identity. And we know what the impact of that 
uh, gamma zero matrix is. All that it did is that it flipped the order of those two things. So for that reason, let's uh, immediately do it. So we get eta s dagger gamma p, oh sorry, <laughs> a p dot sigma, uh, sigma bar with a minus, right? So this is now there and comma eta s dagger square root of p dot sigma. So that's the effect that the gamma zero matrix had. So now we can do this multiplication. We have sum s equals one, two, and now we multiply. So this times this, so we get minus, this would be square root p dot sigma, eta s, eta s dagger, p dot sigma bar, and then we get this times this, so that is p dot sigma, eta s, eta s dagger, p dot sigma, and there is no minus sign there. Then we have minus minus, so it becomes positive, so that would be um, p dot sigma bar, eta s, eta s dagger, dagger, p dot sigma bar, and finally we have a negative, so minus p dot sigma bar, eta s, eta s dagger, p dot sigma. All right, so now just like before, the sum, right, so we are going to have that the sum s equals one, two, of eta s, eta s dagger, this is going to be the two by two identity, exactly like before. So we get rid of it. So let's continue with our expression. So this would be, now this thing is minus m. This thing right here, minus m. It, the only difference from before is the minus sign. This thing here is p, I guess I'm gonna write it like this, p dot sigma, down here we have p dot sigma bar, and then we have minus m again. So this is exactly the same as before. We can write this as zero p dot sigma, p dot sigma bar, zero minus m. This thing, as we saw, that is simply our gamma mu p mu minus m. So there we go. The sum, right, over v s p, v bar s p is this. And again, there's different ways to write this. You can say gamma dot p minus m, or you can use this slash notation, p slash minus m. All that is exactly the same. Um, so yeah, I hope that this video was useful to you. As you can see, it was a relatively simple calculation. Um, if it was useful, please consider to leaving a like on the video, commenting and subscribing, and maybe even consider checking out my Patreon, where you can support me and help me to spend more time doing these courses. You can also um, go ahead and maybe check out my uh, Twitch or my Discord. We are building a community on Discord. The link is in the description and in the first comment. Um, it would be really great to see you there. There we can have a lot of conversations. If you have questions, you can have, find other people who are learning these topics. So I really recommend that you go there. And if you want me to cover a particular topic, why not go on Ableby? So the link is right here. And there you can either start or support a petition for me to cover a particular topic that you would like to see. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in another video.